Good evening, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. Today is Tuesday, April 6th, I think. No, April 7th. Uh, time is flying when we're having fun, right? Uh, numbers today, 1.4 million cases worldwide, 81,000 deaths, 300,000 recoveries worldwide in the U.S., 392,000 cases, uh, about 12,500 deaths, and right now about 21,000 people who have recovered. So you see that recovery number is starting to go up, which is a good thing because it plays into what we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Uh, here in North Carolina, 3,200 cases, 46 deaths. The, uh, it does seem like all these isolation protocols we've said it's, it, uh, to affect closing businesses, social distancing really does seem like it's having an effect. More and more models are being run that show a much lower death you know, uh, death toll from this virus than we originally thought. It's a good thing. The, the, the things that we're doing are actually working. It may, in hindsight, be a bad thing because, you know, if we, if we lower this rate enough, people are going to be like, what did we do? It wasn't that big a deal. Who cares? Well, the reason it's not going to be that big a deal, hopefully, is that we're doing all these things. And so it's important that we maintain that because if we release those restrictions right now, those numbers are going to go right back up. You know, this is a very highly infectious virus, meaning it's easy to catch and it's easy to give to other people. And the, you know, the little zinger is the fact that once you get it for about five days, you give it to everybody else and you have no idea. You don't even know that you're sick. So that's what makes it so difficult. And that's why we need to keep doing the social distancing. There is a, you know, a thing about models that they say, you know, all models are wrong, but some of them give you good information. So you have to take into account that these models are only good as, as good as the data that's put into them. And also that data changes. So as we implement things like social distancing, the underlying assumptions get changed about how many people are gonna get uh, the virus from other people. Couple of good news, uh, a couple pieces of good news on the vaccination front. I know people don't like Bill Gates for whatever reason, but Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is uh, funding a human trial of a vaccine that just started. It's a DNA vaccine, which we don't really use in humans, which uses essentially, it starts a plasmid, which is this little RNA um, uh, circle almost into a cell. And then that plasmid stimulates the cell to produce antibodies. And hopefully it makes antibodies against the coronavirus used in a lot of animal vaccines. That technology has never been used in a human, but it could be a, a quick way of getting uh, to a, a vaccine. And that just started a phase one clinical trial today. Remember, you gotta go through a number of phases We're using larger numbers of people before you can actually say it's safe. But, and there's a second uh, uh, clinical trial that started in March for another vaccine. You know, we, we can develop these vaccines very quickly. Why does it take 18 months for them to become available? Well, you know, if it's great if you have a vaccine that protects you completely from the virus, but if, you know, you sprout a third arm out of the back of your, uh, out of your back because of the vaccine, we need to know that. So we need to know that the vaccines are both effective, meaning that they prevent you from getting the virus, and they're safe, meaning that we're not gonna sprout extra limbs or develop other problems. And there are some particular challenges with these types of coronaviruses uh, in that there's actually a, a, a reaction you can get that actually makes the infection worse with the vaccination if it's done incorrectly. The uh, antibody trials, we talked about this, I think I, I talked about convalescent plasma going way back, you know, weeks ago when we first started talking about that. And that's the idea that you take somebody that's had the virus, you withdraw some of their blood, you, you filter out the, the antibodies that they made against the virus, and then you inject them into somebody else, and then it either protects them from getting it, so you give it to frontline healthcare workers, or maybe you give it to the sickest people, and hopefully they improve. And so trials of that, we've been talking about for a while, but they're actually going on in New York City. Um, at Mount Sinai, I think that they're uh, starting with 20 critically ill patients. Remember, back to what we talked about, we've only had 21,000 recoveries in the U.S. And those are the people that we need to use to get the, the convalescent plasma from. We also don't have those antibody tests that are widely available, although they're coming out now, where we can test people and say, yeah, you've had it, you're immune, you've got these antibodies, and you're actually eligible to donate now. But once it happens, you know, everybody that's had the virus is a potential lifesaver 
for multiple other people because those convalescent antibodies can probably be used to prevent infection in 10 to 20 people and treat infections, you know, severe infections in a couple people. So it's a little bit of like organ donation, but you know, you don't have to die, which is great. Um, Brenda King uh, sent me an interesting little comment on the, that she's been following you since the 15th. And on that first day on the 15th, we had 2,000 cases in the US and we have 392 cases today. And that's in the course of 23 days. So you can see how those numbers have gone up. And thank you, Brenda, for that information. I've got a question about mosquitoes. We don't think the mosquitoes can transmit the virus. As you know, we talked about medical practice. You know, what I tell you today, I may come back in two days and tell you, you know what? I'm an idiot and I'm completely wrong and we've, our thinking about that has completely changed. We talked about the, the changing thoughts on intubation and permissive hypoxia that we're, we're starting to um, use in the emergency department where we're treating this disease more like an altitude sickness or uh, a, a dissociative oxygen uh, binding problem as opposed to ARDS, which is this overwhelming sort of fluid and, and destruction of the lung tissue. We are going to, I've had this thought for a while of, you know, what can we, you know, what can we get out of this whole situation that's positive? And one of the things I would hope for, for the folks who are watching this is that maybe we can provide some information so that you walk out of quarantine maybe a little healthier than when you went in. So we've started doing these weekly wellness talks and I think that we're gonna do a Facebook Live in a little different format this week and we are gonna particularly focus on how to stay healthy, what supplements you should be taking, what kind of things you need to do exercise-wise, what things you can do to prevent you from getting the virus, or if you get it, to have a minimal course, because I think there are some immune-modulating supplements that help. There are some things like zinc that have been shown to be potentially helpful. And so we're going to do that on Thursday, and I'll, I'll post some information about it. I'm slowly learning how to do the Facebook Live thing. Maybe this time I won't started on the wrong page. Anyway, that's what I have for tonight. Please, as usual, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of everyone else, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Good night.